Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. In this tutorial we're going through the Map Color Options, which is under the Select tab in Dungeon Fog. Simply select the entire canvas and that will bring up this option called Map Color Options with a toggle for grading, enabled or disabled, contrast, brightness and reset color settings. Now with this particular map it's set during the day, although I have set out lights within the uh, map itself using the standard lighting techniques that we've discussed in other tutorials. If our PCs were to access this map at night, we would want the map to reflect that, and at the moment it's set during the day. Map Color Options allows us to preset various states of our map so that we can toggle between the one state or the other. In this case, I have already applied a color grading to the map. I'm going to enable it now by enabling the toggle. The map now looks like it's set at night. Notice the lighting effects are still in place and the light is still being cast by all of the light sources within the map. However, the map now has the nighttime effect. We can see that the day-night effect is enabled. If I left click on this, it brings up thousands of grading options for us to choose from. Whilst this might appear to be a rather daunting list of options for us, we are able to favorite effects that we will use on a frequent basis. If we want to apply a new effect to our map, I'm going to left click and drag the box over here so I can see my full map, it's as easy as simply clicking on an option. The effect will automatically be applied to the map. We can then work through all of the different options that are available to us that have been presented to us within Dungeon Fog, choosing what we want, what we don't want, dropping effects, adding effects, and it really is about finding an effect that works best for your setting. Once we have an option that we like, all we need to do is simply click on the heart button and that will automatically add it to our favorites tab. This allows us to create a collection of effects that we particularly like and simply and quickly add them to our basic favorites folder so we could apply them as we so choose. Now, once we have selected the option, we can also search for it in the search option. So let us say night. And that brings up the stylized miscellaneous, which gives us corrupted night, day for night, or night fall. I think day for night looks quite good. So I'm going to select day for night. And with that selected, I'm going to close the color grading filter box. And now we turn our attention to the blending, contrast, and brightness options. The blending slider simply applies the lighting effect to our map. At 100%, it applies the filter at 100%. As we decrease this value, so we decrease the amount of the filter applied to the map until it's 0%, it is as if it is our original map. I'm going to increase this back up to 100%. Contrast is the amount of difference between the white and black levels of the map. Something that's particularly bright will become brighter, something that is particularly dark will become darker as we increase the contrast, whereas if we decrease the contrast, something that is white will become grey, something that is black will become grey. Let me show you now. So as I decrease the contrast, the map moves towards grey until eventually it would simply vanish into a grey fog. Alternatively, if I push it too far, everything will just disappear into an extreme contrast of the brightest and darkest sections of our map. You can play around with this as much as you choose to do so to make that map really work for you. Bearing in mind that simply because the contrast doesn't look so great for the night and day effect, if I were to choose some other kind of effect that, let's say, for example, the World War II map, which I have just deselected by clicking on the cross, I would have to go and find that again and reload it. So let's go and use our tab here, World War One. I'm going to add that to the style. And if I then get rid of that search option, I can now apply it apply it by clicking on it and closing the window. By reducing the contrast, the map starts to become a little bit more authentic in terms of its look and feel. If I increase it, it becomes unusable. Now, the same thing will apply if I just reset this value. I can also just type in on my keyboard 100 and then press the right enter key to lock it into Dungeon Fog's memory. If I change the brightness, again, things will move towards white. If I increase the value, they'll move towards black if I decrease the value. So in this case, if we increase the brightness, you can see the map moving towards white. If we decrease it, you can see it moving towards black. With maps like this, we might want to increase that brightness, so we're getting some detail in the uh, pumpkin patches, but if we increase our contrast, we'll get the uh, resolution back 
in terms of differentiation between the black and the white levels. So somewhere around there doesn't look too bad to my eye. If I zoom in on the map, this has a very, very old school feel, a World War II feel for that matter. If I'm unhappy with any of these levels, all I simply do is reset the color settings. All that does is it will reset the contrast, the brightness and the blending options. It will not reset the filter that has been applied. So I simply hit the reset color buttons and everything is back to its normal value. If I don't want the filter applied or if I want to change the filter, I simply select the filter and apply it. Or I simply use the toggle and disable the filter. The filter is no longer applied to the map, and under normal circumstances, when I would export the map, the map would be exported as we see it. If I enable the color grading and I go to export, the color filter will be applied to the map as we export it. In order to remove that filter, we would have to go back to the original editor and remove the filter. Please note that if you have multiple levels within your canvas, and I go to the Levels tab, where I have a level below, that the color grade is not applied to the level below. Let me just hide the farmhouse ground floor. The caves have not had that effect at all applied to it, and we could apply a separate effect to the caves. So if I were to choose, for example, sepia, as in this is an underground filter of some kind, and let's reduce that a little bit so we get some faded color in there. That looks quite good. It will not be applied to the farmhouse when I then select the farmhouse. So if I go back to the farmhouse and we'll see that that still has the day night effect. Again, as I export it, so these effects will be applied appropriately to each level. And that is how you use the map color gradings in Dungeon Fog.